In this episode of Super Zicento, you're going to have to give me a little bit of space. Hello YouTube, Miller Corner here, welcome back to Super Zicento, and today we're going to be doing a mod that's both cheap, easy and hopefully very very effective because you see a few months back when I added the 14 inch Abarth wheels to my car in my opinion I massively improved the look of it. However because they're essentially factory wheels on the Seicento Sporting Abarth models and manufacturers aren't too keen on flush fitment for your wheels for some reason the wheels are quite far into the arches there is by no means a flush fitment to the body and that can make it look a little bit odd particularly I noticed when I was filming up in Beachy Head with Surrey Kami a few weeks back the car just didn't look quite right in the shots I took of it, almost a little bit top heavy because the wheels were a little bit too far into the arches. Well to rectify that I have bought these. These are 10mm wheel spacers, they're in the 4x98 stud pattern that the Seicento takes and they should hopefully go underneath the wheels and push them out 10mm on each wheel to space them out and make them fit more flush with the body. If you're going to be putting wheel spacers on your car though, you should make a note of how wide the spacers are actually going to be, measure up how wide they're going to fit on the arches once they're actually installed and then of course if you're using wheel bolts like my car does, you're also going to need some longer bolts. So I've also invested in hopefully more than one longer wheel bolt for my car as well. And here they are, 45mm M12 by 1.25 wheel bolts, which as you can see are far longer than the factory ones. However, I'm not a fan of the almost chrome silver heads on them, so the first job is to get the heads painted a bit more subtle colour. I begin by poking enough holes in some scrap cardboard to hold all 16 bolts before inserting them into it and using the exact same satin black paint we used on my original wheels. The can is shaken well before I give the bolts a few light coats of paint, leaving around two to three minutes between each coat and 10 minutes to dry after all of them. Soon the paint is set and we've gone from this to this. With the bolts ready it's then time to get fitting and I begin by cracking the nuts with an extended wheel brace while the car's still on the ground. Whenever jacking up a car remember to always put it in gear when possible and if you're working on a driveway like I am, chock your rear wheels. Safety first. With that done, jack up your car. Be sure to constantly check the car doesn't lift multiple wheels off the ground and that your jack remains on the jacking point. I then discover that I forgot to crack one of the nuts, so I lower the car back down, crack the nut, and then jack it up again before removing the wheel. Let's never speak of this again. What? Mod that's both cheap, easy, easy, easy. Next I attempt to slot the spacer onto the disc, only to discover that these universal spacers, not designed specifically for my car, don't clear the bolts and nuts holding the brake disc on. It does kind of fit, but a spacer should sit flush against your brake so as to avoid wheel wobble, or worse, the spacer cracking when the wheel nuts are tightened down onto it. Eventually I get the spacer in place, only to knock it out of alignment by simply touching the disc with the wheel when attempting to refit it. Oh, you f Desperate, I call in my mum to help, who has a simple but brilliant idea. There we go, that's like that. Can't you tape it on or something? No, that's not a bad idea, actually. Didn't think of that. Hang oh, on. you need a bit of masking tape. Yeah, we've got just some in the garage. Hang on. Just to sort of steady it. Now I just want to get it on. That's it. There we go, that might oh. actually work. Ah, oh, well, it hasn't not. But? Well, let's find out. With the tape holding the spacer in place, I go for it. However... Damn. Why won't it? No, because it's, no, it's moved. No, that's going to have to come out again. What with the constant setbacks and near freezing to death in the February cold, I lose what's left of my patience. I'm f***ing with this. This is so... Why doesn't it just fit? I can't even get the bolt off. No, that's nowhere near, so I don't know what that's actually screwed oh, well. into. It's ridiculous. It shouldn't be this hard. Why is life so hard? So this is proving to be a little bit harder than expected because these aren't specifically designed for a Seicento they don't really fit on entirely correctly. They fit over the bolts but uh, there are a couple of issues. One is this bolt holding the brake disc on, one is that bolt holding the brake disc on and one is the fact that if you can by some miracle get it lined up the act of tapping the brake disc with the wheel will knock this out of alignment and then you start all over again. This is taking a little bit longer than expected. I think, to be perfectly honest with you, I am getting incredibly frustrated with this so I'm going to take a break and then I'm going to call in some reinforcements. 
The next day I'm back on the driveway wearing basically identical clothes and with my dad in tow for help I'm confident that between us we can get these on. I show him how the spacers won't fit flush due to fouling on the brake disc bolts and using a combination of clever eye work and man maths we spend the next 20 minutes strategically smoothing the edges of the spacer down so as to accommodate the bolts. Eventually the spacer fits flush and to make refitting the wheel without knocking the spacer easier we decide to put two bolts through the wheel to hold the spacer onto it and as my dad lifts the wheel up onto the mounting point I get the bolts started to locate everything. Oh, hello, yeah. With the wheel and spacer on the car, the bolts tighten down and the spacer hopefully secure, I jump in the car to take it out of gear and be ready on the brakes just in case while my dad checks the wheel spins without wobbling or the spacer coming off. Even the rain starting isn't going to stop us. With one front spacer confirmed done, we lower the car back down and jack the rear of the car up to get the first rear spacer on. The wheel comes off and after a quick inspection, there's a slight lack of clearance over the bolt on the drum. One smoothed edge later and a perfect fit. Given the success at the front of the car, we decided to repeat the idea of putting the bolts through the wheel to locate the spacer onto it before lifting the whole lot onto the car while I locate it by tightening the bolts down. With this idea proving yet again to be inspired, the first rear spacer is done. The wheel is reattached, we lower the car back down, and then it's on to the other side. I flip the car round, yes, Sicentos really do only have one reversing light, and then we jack the car up and it's time for the other rear spacer. It's a similarly awkward but successful story on the other side. Identify bolt overlap, smooth spacer edge to accommodate, thread bolt through wheel and spacer to hold them on, and tighten the bolts down once the wheel is in place to locate them. Lather, rinse and repeat for the other front wheel, lower the car back down, and we're done. We've gone from this, to this. So after quite a bit of work and a fair bit of frustration, it is done. We've got 10mm wheel spacers all the way around on the Super Sicento, and I have to say that despite the amount of work, aggro and effort it took, I am super super happy with the result because these are bath wheels, they look great externally and now they look great from the side profile as well because they fill out the arches and give the car an all round wider, sportier and more aggressive look. I've also learned that when you are buying wheel spacers, don't necessarily just buy them for your car's stud pattern. If they exist, buy some wheel spacers for your vehicle. Now I will acknowledge that Sicento wheel spacers do exist, but the ones that I bought for just a 4x98 stud pattern were cheaper, quicker to post and easier to find online. But that said, I kind of regret not going for specific Sicento ones now. I've seen so much effort it took to get these generic 4x98 ones to fit. That said, they are on, it wasn't an expensive mod to do, and I am super, super happy with the improvement they've made to the look of the car. Next up, we're going back to the performance mods as 2018's to turn this little car into an absolute beast continues. Now if you want to see everything that's to come on my epic little Fiat Sagento, then make sure to hit that subscribe button and also the bell icon so that you are notified when a new Super Sagento video is released. And obviously you can keep up to date with me and all my videos as well as the progress of this car on all of my social networks. But for now thanks for watching everybody and have a brilliant rest of your day. See you soon and have a good one.